Hello and welcome to the last section. We're going to be using luminosity blending to help out with your Photoshop compositing. I'm so excited. This is going to be a really fun section and luminosity blending is really a big part of compositing because once you get an object and put it in a new background, most of the time it doesn't just like fit perfectly and look great. You're going to have to make some changes in order to actually have it fit and make sense in that new background. You might have to adjust your light levels, you might have to adjust your dark levels, your colors, your highlights and shadows, those will probably have to be adjusted as well. So we're going to show you how to do all of that right now. So here in Photoshop, let's go ahead and open up our sample images. We are going to go to our sample images, chapter 3, section 4, compositing 1 and 2.jpg. Now a quick little note, I'm actually going to cut out our subject in just a minute, but you don't have to do all that work. I'm going to include a couple files in here with the subject already cut out. So right now I'm just going to use compositing one and two .jpg, but you're going to have a couple more files. Those files are your subject already cut out. So you don't have to do that part of it. You can just focus on the luminosity blending. So let's go ahead and open up our two images here. There we go. And just a quick little note on how I chose these images. Uh, you can see our subject here is in soft light, meaning uh, she doesn't have any like hard shadows behind our subject. Like you can't see like a, you know, solid outline of our subject in a shadow. Uh, that's soft light, which is done like you get soft light when you're in like a shadow area or for instance, if it's like a cloudy day. Hard light would be if you're in like a bright light situation or like, you know, a bright sunny day. So we're going to be putting our subject into this background and she's going to be standing right about here, which as you can see is in shadow. So I just wanted to make sure she's got a soft light because where I want to put her, we need a soft light for that. And then the perspective is about the same for the two images as well. Now we are doing compositing here and focusing on luminosity blending, but if you want any more help with compositing, uh, just go to the Flurn. There we go. You can see up in your catalog, you can just go down to compositing here. Okay. Or if you're in the catalog, just go to compositing in your topics. We've got some great examples like intro to Photoshop compositing for beginners, how to change and remove background, masking and cutting out subjects. These are all great examples on Photoshop compositing. So let's go ahead and get back into Photoshop. Now I'm just going to cut the subject out relatively quickly here. So let's hit F for full screen. Oh, clicked on the wrong image there. We'll hit F for full screen and I'm going to use my pen tool. So we'll hit P for the pen tool. Now with the pen tool, let's go ahead and zoom into my image. Basically, I'm just going to trace around my subject and I'm going to use the pen tool to stay slightly to the inside of the border of my subject. Okay, there we go. So you can see, just click and kind of drag out there. So we make a curved line there. I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and just pull that up in that way. There we go. And kind of pull this down there. So the whole idea with the pen tool is you can make any adjustments that you need at any point in time. And then basically my job is just kind of like trace right around my subject. So it's a really great tool. Anytime you need an accurate cutout, there we go. If you just need a quick cutout, you can use tools like the magic wand tool and things like that. But if you really want it to be accurate, the pen tool really is the way to go. So alt or option, just click and drag there. Okay. And we'll just kind of pull that up there. Okay. Now, just because this takes a little bit of time, I'm going to continue cutting out our subject. We're just going to speed this up a little bit so you can see the whole process just going to go a little bit faster.
Okay, so we just made a pen path around the majority of our subject. I'm just gonna go to my paths dialog, double click and just call this subject here. And I'm gonna create a new path. Uh, we've got a couple areas just uh, right here and right here. So with this new path, basically same exact process. What we're gonna wind up doing with the pen tool is just making a selection out of these paths and then loading that selection as a layer mask there. All right, so just kind of keep you updated. Uh, we're just gonna spend just a couple seconds, we'll speed this up and then we'll resume when we're, all of our paths are made. are made and we can cut out our subject. It's super easy to do, honestly, right now because we did all the hard work. So let's go ahead and hit Control or Command and then click right here on our subject path. And we're gonna go to our layers and click on our layer mask. There we go. And you can see my subject is pretty well cut out. We just have to take care of these two areas. So we'll go back to our paths here. We'll go to the arm, hold Control or Command and click on the arm make that a selection. And then on the layer mask, I'm gonna hit shift delete. We'll fill that with black. That just makes it invisible. And then we'll do the same thing here with the leg. Control or command, select the leg, click on our layer mask, shift delete, and then we'll fill that with black also. Perfect, so this is our subject cutout. I'm gonna go ahead and save this one, uh, cutout. So we're just gonna call this cut out. There we go. And this is gonna be a PSD. So this is gonna have layers. In other words, it'll, this will have the paths in there, okay? And you'll be able to hit shift to enable or disable that layer mask anytime. I'm also gonna to go to file down to export and uh, save for web. And we're gonna export this out as a PNG, which has transparency. There we are. So you can use this PNG also. So let's go ahead and hit save. Okay, and then we're in chapter three, compositing, cut out, and then we'll just call this PNG. Okay, so you don't have to do any of that work. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our subject. So again, you can follow along from here because you'll have this PSD of the subject already cut out. All you have to do is just take our subject and click and drag to the new image. There you go, your subject's cut out. Pretty cool. So let's hit F for full screen and we'll just analyze like a couple of things about this image. Uh, first, we wanna get our subject about in the right place. And again, we want uh, her to be in the shadow areas. So the further down she is, that's closer to the camera. The further up she is, that's farther away. And notice how she looks like just a little bit too big here. Uh, you know, down here, she's looking a little bit more uh, there we go. She's looking a little bit more properly sized. A good hint here, good little tip, is to just like zoom your image way out and then you'll get a good idea of like, is she too large or too small? And she still looks a little too large. I'm gonna hit Control or Command T, okay? Then I'm gonna turn my little control point on here. If you're using the newest version of Photoshop, you turn it on right here. And then I'm just gonna take this and drag it down to her feet and then we'll just make her a little bit smaller. Okay, maybe a little bit less. And hit enter there. Okay, and that looks pretty good size wise. Now let's go ahead and analyze a couple of things about this image uh, that we'll wanna take into account for our subject. So we're gonna create a new layer here. I'm gonna hit B for the brush tool and we'll just choose a color that we can kind of stand out. So you'll notice that here in these like deep, deep shadow areas, for instance, this is actually not completely black. If I hit B for my brush tool and then hold Alt or Option, I'm gonna sample this color and we're gonna see, okay, that this color is basically the black point of our image, okay? So that's really good to know. What that really means is that if this is the darkest point in our background, like this is the shadow point, then we really can't have much darker than that on my subject 
or it's not really going to look real, right? Because again, we want our subject to fit into this background. All right, so how do we go about fixing that sort of thing? Well, luminosity blending. So we'll just go ahead and fix this because it's really easy. We're just going to create a new layer above our subject. And then I just sampled that color. So we're just, let's just go ahead and brush right over top of our subject. Bop, 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 bop. OK, just with that color. So it's just use your brush tool, sample that color, and then paint over your subject. OK, now <laughs> one more thing that we want to do is I want to make sure that this is only visible where my subject is visible. And for that, we're going to use what's called a clipping mask. Now, a clipping mask basically just uses one layer's visibility. In this case, it's going to be layer one. And that's going to decide where this layer three is going to be visible. OK, it's really easy to do. Let's just right click here on layer three. And we're going to go to Create Clipping Mask. There we go. And as you see, it kind of just bumps it over a little bit. And we have this little down arrow. And that is what says this layer is clipped to this other layer. All right, let's do another one just for an example. So let's create a new layer. This time, we'll just choose a nice bright color. And I'm going to make like a cube here. So we'll just hold Alt or Option and hit Delete to fill with our foreground color. So again, this just regular old cube here, if I right click and go to Create Clipping Mask, boom. Now this cube is only visible where my subject is. And you can see I can move it around. There we go. This other layer down here, I can move this one around too. OK, so it's basically because I have a layer mask here, these layers are now only visible where they're clipped to. So they're clipping down to this one. You can see they have all got those little down arrows. And then this layer is only visible where I defined in the layer mask. So that's why these layers are only visible there. Let's do one more. I'm just going to grab like a curves adjustment layer. OK, we'll just make it brighter. OK. And right now, you can see this Curves Adjustment layer affects our entire image. But again, if I just right click and go to Create Clipping Mask, boom, check that out. It only affects our subject. So that's the idea behind clipping masks. And when you're compositing, clipping masks are very helpful, especially if you use them in conjunction with our luminosity blending. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. It's really easy. What we're going to do, let's just go ahead and delete these layers. Remember this layer that I just painted over here? OK. so. The deal was I analyzed that shadow color like this, this, you know, that's my dark, dark color. That's like the black point, right? I just took that color and I just painted some area over here. OK, again, it's just a regular layer. OK, just I just painted with a brush tool. Now, if I right click and go to create clipping mask, then it just becomes visible right over top of my subject. OK, now again, we have our black point from our background. So what I want to do here is basically set my foreground or my subject to have the same black point, right? So we're going to use luminosity blending for that. We don't want this to be visible in our highlight areas, right? We want this to be visible in our shadow areas. So now we know how to do that, right? Let's try blend diff. We're going to double click right here. I'll hold alt or option and click right here. And you're going to see, check it out. It's just disappearing from my highlight areas. There we go. And I'll just go a little bit more. OK, and there we go. It's starting to just be visible in my shadows. And then I'm just going to say, you know what? I want this to just be visible in like just the darkest areas of my shadows. OK, so let's go ahead and zoom that in. OK, and it's kind of taking care of like some of those darker areas there. OK, let's go ahead and make it just even in the little darker areas. So we'll look at our subjects here. So it's taking some of that detail and just putting it to be that dark color. And notice how some of these colors, like that color right there, is a little bit darker than the color we're choosing to add in there. And that's OK, because my goal here is to match the foreground, to match this subject with that background. That's my goal, OK? So we're using luminosity blending to do it. And even if I just do this and zoom in, you can see already just that little color match from what's going on in the image, just that little thing already helps. So let's do the same thing with our highlights. I'm going to create a new layer, OK? And let's take a look at our highlights. So we'll just take a look at this color here. 
B for the brush tool, I'm going to sample this color. Notice it's kind of like a little bit on the warm side. It's got a little bit of warmth to it. Okay. So what we're going to do is on a new layer, I'm just going to paint right over top of our subject. It's a regular layer here. Okay. <laughs> right click and we'll go to create clipping mask. So it's just visible where the subject is. And now we just want this to be visible over the highlights. So we're literally taking colors from the background and putting them on our subject and defining highlight and shadow colors. It's super cool. So let's go ahead and double click here. I'm gonna hold Alt or Option, and let's just click and drag from the left to the right now, okay? Because we want this to be visible in the highlight colors. Now that actually looks pretty good. Let's just make it a little bit less visible. There we go, and that looks good. So we have some of the color from the image itself actually on my subject. So let's just turn those two off and back on. And you can see already she looks more like she's in this image, which is so cool. Let's keep going with the same concept. So now we're going to create another layer. And we're going to just going to reflect some of the color from the ground onto our subject. So when you're compositing, it's super helpful to think about objects as like reflecting the lights and reflecting the colors that are around your subject. So to demonstrate this principle, I've actually just got a piece of pink notepad here. And take a look at my face as I bring this notepad next to my face. So this pink notepad, what it's going to do is the light that's in this room is going to bounce off this pink notepad and actually reflect onto my face. So as I bring this pink notepad here right next to my face, you're going to see some of this pink on my face. Let's just move that out so you're going to see not as much now. And then there we go. We've got a lot more pink on my face. So that principle, <laughs> thank you pink notepad, that principle is what we're going to work with here to match a little bit of the color. So when we're compositing, we want to keep in mind that your subject actually reflects the colors that are in their environments as well. And that's going to be a big tip to help your composites look more realistic and luminosity blending allows you to do that as well. So back in Photoshop, <laughs> thanks for bearing with me for that little example there. Okay, back in Photoshop, we're gonna grab this ground color here and I'm gonna just paint it right up. There we go. Okay, on to the bottom of my subject. The idea being, maybe a little bit there, the idea being that the lower part of your subject, okay, is going to reflect some of the color of the ground. It's going to bounce up and cause a little bit of a color cast there. Okay, so now that we have that there, let's go ahead and change our layer blend mode from normal. We're going to just try down to color. Okay, and I want to make sure to clip this. So option command G is the keyboard shortcut for clipping. You can always just right click and go to create clipping mask. So this color is now going to be colorizing some of my subject, but it's going to do this in the shadow areas. Okay, so we're going to double click here and I'm going to hold Alt or Option and click and drag from the right to the left. Okay, which is going to make it disappear from the highlight areas. Okay, we'll just go a little bit more there and then you can kind of work with your opacity. But you can see if my opacity is zero, see how like the saturation of her legs and everything like that, it's a little bit too high. As I bring this just up, we don't even have to go that far. You can see already it's starting to reflect some of the color of the ground there and just look a little bit more realistic. Okay, so we'll just bring that right about there and hit OK. So let's just go ahead and take a look. Here's the before and after real quick. You can already see my subject is starting to blend into the image just a little bit better. Now, the next thing that I want to do is create a little bit of like a light that comes around my subject. Okay. And that's the same principle. Light that's behind your subject is going to like kind of come around the size just a little bit. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. Okay. And on this new layer, we're actually going to just sample this color here in the background. There we go. And I'm going to paint this right over top of my subject just on the border. Okay. This is the area where it's kind of, you know, kind of like 
come around to the front. And all these things that I'm doing is just helping our subject look more realistic. Now you'll notice that I'm not really going to be doing this on the ground, okay? Just the lighter areas, because that's, you know, it's the background that literally kind of comes right around the subject. It's like it's wrapping around. There we go. So let's just paint a little bit there too. Okay, you don't have to be super accurate here because we're going to use luminosity blending. And in a second, I'm going to have this just be visible in the highlights. But you really just kind of want to do the edge. Okay, so now that my edges are pretty well taken care of, we're going to hit uh, right click and just go to create clipping mask. Again, we don't need this to be visible on our background, just on our subject. Next, we're going to double click here and we want this to be visible in our highlight areas. So let's hold Alt or Option and I'm going to click and drag from the left to the right. Okay, and have this be mostly visible in our highlight areas. Okay, so you can still see it's visible there. And then we're going to change our layer blend mode from normal down to soft light. So let's hit OK. So you can see just a little bit of that like light kind of wrapping around our subject. Okay, you can see it puts her in that environment just a little bit more. Okay, now I'm going to do on a new layer here, we're going to do another soft light layer. And I'm just going to paint like ever so subtly in some of these darker areas too. Okay, that's just going to kind of same, same principle there. We obviously want to clip this option command G. So same principle. All right, and we'll be visible in some of these little bit of these dark areas too. Okay, I'm going to blur that just a little bit. So let's go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. There we go. Okay. So let's turn those two off. You can see she just kind of looks cut out now. It looks like a copy paste type of deal. Let's turn these back on and you can see she looks like she's blending in there a little bit better. Now let's go to the bottom of my image here. We're just going to zoom in and take a look. Notice how when I cut my subject out, I left a little bit of the ground and a little bit of that shadow. What we're going to do is just make this ground area just a little bit darker, basically. Okay. So let's grab an adjustment layer. We're going to go to hue slash saturation. Okay, I'm going to clip this. So we'll right click and go to clip it, uh, create clipping mask. Now let's just go ahead and take our lightness down. Okay, and bring our saturation. You know what? The ground has like a little bit of like a, almost like a red tone to it, right? There we go. Okay, and as I take my lightness down, okay, you're going to start to see it's just going to blend in a little bit better. Now, I'm going to click on my uh, my layer mask here and actually just paint white on my layer mask just a little bit to like feather that edge out a little bit. And that's going to help me decide how dark or how light I, I want to make this. Okay, let's continue to bring the lightness down a little bit. Okay. There we go. I'm going to click on this colorize button actually so we can help match the color. So let's just bring that down in brightness. Okay, give it a little bit of saturation and a little bit of this like reddish color that I'm seeing there. Okay. And right about there, we're seeing, turning this off and on, we can see how the ground now, her, her ground and the ground that we're putting her on are starting to blend together a little bit better, right? Let's just click on our layer mask. I'm going to paint white just a little bit right around here also. Okay. So these two are blending together just a little bit better. There we go. That color looks pretty good. So 
what we're going to do now is just use our layer mask because I only really want this to be visible in the shadow area. Like, obviously, <laughs> I don't want to just cover my entire subject in that, right? Although, I'm going to duplicate this because I think maybe we will use this on our subject just at a really low opacity. So, now, this little change that I made here, let's just layer mask it in so it's just visible here on the ground area. And this is the real key to helping a person look like they're on the ground, is you want to use the shadow from the original image. Like, don't cut that out because it's super helpful. And then you just colorize the ground to match. So let's invert this layer mask. Controller command I to invert this. And then I'm just going to paint white on the layer mask. And remember, white on your layer mask just like makes a layer visible, right? So I'm just making this visible right down here. Okay, just a little larger brush and I'm just going to paint like a little bit subtle here so it's going to reflect. Again, we're talking about, you know, reflecting some of the ground color, right? Okay, so we want to make sure it's 100% visible here where we just have like absolute ground. <laughs> there we go. And then I'm just going to choose a larger brush in just a second. Okay, see a little bit larger brush. And then keep in mind that's like where the shoe was going to reflect some of the ground from before. Larger brush and then we'll just paint with like a low flow and that's just going to kind of help some of this blend in a little bit better. There we go. Now one thing that we want to keep in mind is see when I did that it introduced some pretty dark colors here. Remember earlier we decided that this should be the darkest color. So that was actually in this layer. Remember this layer that we made earlier? Okay. The colors are darks. So because I put this hue saturation above that, okay, it's kind of taking precedence, making part of my image even darker than I want. So I'm just going to take this layer three where I defined the dark point, and we're just going to click and drag that up. So check that out. There's the before. You can see it's a little bit too dark for this image because we already decided we we already decided on the darkest point. So if I just bring that right up, pop. Look at that. Now it still works. And our subject looks like she's standing on the ground. And the darkest point in the shadow is matching with the darkest point of the shadow up there. OK. So I think that's really, really nice. Let me just blur this uh, layer just a little bit. OK. And here we're kind of seeing some of our effects are actually starting to take hold and make the image look realistic. Now this other hue saturation copy that I got, okay, this layer here, let's just put that underneath this one too, okay, so that black point kind of just want to leave there on the top. This one we're just going to really lower down the opacity and it's just going to put a tiny bit of that like sh the essence of that like shadow and the essence of the floor in there. Let's just bring the opacity down to 10% on that. That's just going to like pop a little bit of that shadow color. And you know what? Let's make that not so visible in the highlights. There we go. Just throws a little bit of that shadow color right in there. And we can see our subject is looking much more realistic. And most of this is from luminosity blending. So let's just turn all these off. Okay, all those effects that I have off. And we'll turn them back on. And you can see our subject really looks a lot more like she's actually in this environment now. There we go. Let's just erase some of these little areas that when I blurred it went just a little bit too far. So the subject really looks like she's in the environment. The colors of the environment, there's the before and the after. The colors of the environment are now being reflected 
on my subject's skin, and that's helping her look much more realistic in this composite. Next, we're gonna do one more trick with the shadows. I'm gonna hold Shift and click on the layer mask here of my subject. Let's go ahead and turn this layer off as well. And you can see we still have some more shadow detail and then this kind of like darker area here. So what we're gonna do is I wanna actually duplicate the layer where my subject is, okay? So in order to do that, it's really easy to do, let's just create a new layer on the top of everything. And I'll just go to image and down to apply image. There we are. And I'm gonna apply layer one. So let's just choose layer one in a normal blending mode. There we go. Now in this case, it is, um, it's applying my subject. However, it's keeping my layer mask intact. So let's hit cancel there, okay? What we're going to do instead, because it's keeping our layer mask intact, and I actually want to show some of this area, I'm just going to click here and hold Alt or Option, and then drag that up to the top. Okay. So let's go ahead and re-enable those layer masks. So what I did, basically, is just duplicated my subject all the way up. Let's go ahead and group these layers together here. Just double-click and call this Subject. There we go. And I'm going to right click in here and give that a color. All right, let's find out what's on this layer nine. If ever you're not sure what's on a layer, just hold control or command and click on that layer. And it may say no pixels are selected. That tells you nothing's on that layer. So let's hit delete. We don't need that layer. Now this layer here, my subjects in the same exact place. Okay. What I'm going to do is hit shift delete and fill this entire layer mask with black. Okay. And then I'm gonna paint white on the layer mask, just right here, like right around our subject. So when we think about like shadows in Photoshop, there we go, that looks pretty good. When we think about shadows in Photoshop, you have like the shadow that's right under your subject's foot, but you also have like kind of a darker area that is just like your subject is like blocking the light from that area, right? And that's part of the shadow too. So that's what we're gonna get right now. Okay, so from this copy, like I'm just basically making it visible right there. Now what we're gonna do is just change our blend mode of this layer to multiply. And that means the darker places of this layer are gonna be more visible than the lighter places. So let's go ahead and change this from normal down to multiply. There we go. And now that it's set into multiply, we're gonna grab a levels adjustment layer Okay, and we're gonna clip this. So right click, go to create clipping mask. And I want my white point to just be a little bit lighter. And what that's gonna do is it's going to in turn make that less visible. So now you can see it looks much better. Okay, so we're actually getting, this is actual shadow information from our original photograph, which is pretty cool. Okay, now it's not colored exactly right, so let's just grab a hue slash saturation adjustment layer. Okay, let's go ahead and clip this as well. I'm gonna click on colorize and let's just bring our saturation down a little bit. Maybe if we bring it up, we can find this color and a tiny bit of red, but mostly we just wanna bring our saturation down. Okay, that looks great. Now I just wanna make sure that this is not visible you know, over top of my subjects legs and things like that, right? This is really just for the, just for the floor. Okay, so that's basically, you can see, I'm getting some of that original shadow information. Let me just paint black on the layer mask right there. Some of that original shadow information right here on the ground, which makes it look like my subject is actually there. And then the last thing that we're gonna do is, remember how earlier we had uh, this layer here? Okay, this layer, the darkening layer that we sampled this color, we're just gonna do that once more. So let's just grab another layer, hit B for the brush tool, we're gonna sample that, okay? There we go, and just paint right over top of this again. And we're gonna say, double click here, Luminosity blending again, 
Alt or Option, and I'm just saying don't be visible in the highlights, just in the shadows, okay? So I'm basically just reinforcing the same rule over top of that, because when I added that other shadow, you can see it kind of, um, it made some of these areas just a little bit too dark. So I'm reinforcing that saying, nope, this is the darkest point in my image. That's what the shadow level looks like in this photograph. So I'm just adding that over top of it. Let's go ahead and group that together and just call this shadow. Okay, so there we go. Let's zoom out a little bit here and see how that actually looks on the image. So there's the before and the after. You can see the shadow and that level detail, stuff like that. It just, it's, it like seats our subject in there. Like it, it puts our subject on the ground and it helps her look more realistic. So we have our subject with a little bit of shadow right under her. You can see that part looks realistic, but then getting this part in there as well really helps to seal the deal and make our composite look realistic. So there we have it. Compositing with luminosity blending. You can see super important. We've got light information and we've got shadow information. Those each contain light levels and they each contain colors and we put those both into our subject. So we pulled highlights from the background, pop those highlights onto our subject. We pulled shadows from the background. We put those shadows onto our subject. And we did it all with luminosity blending. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you learned how luminosity blending can make a difference in your images. Thanks again. I'll learn you later. Bye everyone.